Doing proper keyword research on YouTube can make an incredible difference. You can go from being stuck at just seven views on a video to getting millions of views and your video getting pushed by YouTube. And let me tell you, I've been stuck at the seven views situation for years, but that was until I understood how keyword research works. As soon as I did, I was able to rank my videos and get, for example, 2.6 million views, which as of right now is still getting a ton of traffic from YouTube search every single day. Not to forget this video made a $11,000. However, with so many tools around, which is the best keyword research tool to help you grow your channel? Today, I'll answer that question by comparing five keyword research tools. I'll be comparing them based on the following things. Number one, the quality of the keywords that I can find with the tool. Because the better the keyword, the better the ranking, the more views you'll get. Then, the time it takes to find the keyword. If it takes you hours and hours to find just a keyword, that is not going to be that great. And then finally, the price of the tool. Now, some of the tools I'll show you you've seen before, while others are completely new and you've not heard of them. Some are free, some are paid. My goal with this video is to help you find the best tool. Because of that, I'll be doing research myself and I'll try and find five keywords with each tool in the AI niche. Starting off with vidIQ. vidIQ has been in the game since 2010 and is trusted by many big YouTubers. Whereas back in the day, I didn't really use it myself. Since early 2023, I started using vidIQ for keyword research. And let me tell you right away, as of right now, it's one of my favorite tools. This is what vidIQ keyword research will look like. You can find it by clicking on keywords and you'll then get to see this right here. Now, if you've got your channel linked to vidIQ, you'll see the best keyword opportunities for your channel specifically, as well as the current top search phrases for your channel. As you can see, they will base the top keyword opportunities for now on your already well-performing keywords. However, this is not really the best thing about vidIQ. Here's how I do research myself with vidIQ and how you should too. So they've got the search keywords bar right here that allows you to search for any keyword that you want. As mentioned, I'll be doing this in the AI niche. So I start out by typing in AI. What I recommend you do is just search for a broad term within your kind of industry. Could be editing, could be AI, could be gaming, whatever it is. You make the search and then right away the search volume as well as competition will show up. However, you want to completely ignore this and go to matching terms instead. Matching terms will show you keywords that contain your search keyword or phrase in any order. Meaning if I search for AI, I will now get to see much more keywords that include AI in that keyword. AI cover, open AI, AI news, AI lookbook, AI video generator. And because of this, within one click, you'll now get to see a bunch of more keywords that are more specific that include the initial term that you search for. Why I like this is because it allows you to find a lot of keywords very, very quickly. And the more you click on a keyword, for example, AI influencer, and then you click on matching terms again, the more specific the keywords will get. Within just two clicks in one minute, we now went from AI to how to create AI influencer. But that's not the only keyword. As you can see, if I scroll down, there are so many of them. How to make AI Instagram influencer. I had never seen that keyword before. I can now click on this once again and then go to matching terms and then potentially see even more in-depth keywords. However, this is kind of where it ends, meaning that this is the most long tail keyword you can find regarding this topic. What you can then do is select a keyword, click copy, and then go to YouTube and search for this. I don't recommend paying too much attention to the search volume and competition. In my opinion, on all of the other tools as well, these scores are a bit inaccurate. I'm a big believer in doing the research yourself. So by using vidIQ, you'll find a keyword, you then search for it on YouTube, and that's where vidIQ comes in again. You can install their vidIQ browser extension, I'll leave a link for you in the description down below, that gives you access to a bunch more features that vidIQ has. And these are some of my favorites when it comes to doing keyword research on YouTube. Right away, what you'll manage to see with vidIQ extension installed is the subscriber count for the videos that are ranking. So this person is ranking number one and has 66k subscribers. As you can see, this is powered by vidIQ. So if that weren't there, I needed to click and then check myself. Obviously to do that once is not that much of a problem, but if you're doing research for one hour and you have to click 500 times, that's gonna add up quite a lot. Then you can also see the outlier score, which is the performance of that current video compared to the average performance on their channel. Ultimately, the best thing you can find is channels with not so many subscribers and a very high outlier score. That indicates that this keyword did very well. Additionally, when you start researching the keyword itself, which if you're not sure how to do, by the way, check out my full keyword research tutorial. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. You're able to see how this video is currently performing. In case 
case you want to try that for yourself, you can do that with the link in the description down below. Whereas normally it will cost you $49 a month for the first 30 days. You can now try this yourself for just $1, which allows you to see if you actually like vidIQ. So I heavily recommend you check that out. And this is my favorite tool when it comes to doing keyword research. If I click on historical, I can now see the performance of this video over time. Now, because this video is massively growing, as you can see right here, I now know that this video is still being watched as of right now. It's even peaking. It's at its best moment, getting about 800 views per hour. The reason that is so valuable is because you can now make a better informed decision. This video right here has 200,000 views by a channel called Knowledge Base. I might now think that this right here is a good keyword to make a video about. However, if I look at the historical data, that will prove me wrong. Because as you can see right there, this used to perform really well, but right now, even since last year, this is barely getting any traffic with not even one view per hour back in November. And this channel right here made that mistake. They probably saw this video right here with 200,000 views and thought it'd be a good video to make. And so they did, but they're stuck at just 400 views, which shows you the power of using the historical data tool as it allows you to see whether a video is still getting traffic or not anymore, which is hands down why that right there is indeed my favorite tool as well as the most important tool when I'm doing keyword research. With that being said, it is now time to do keyword research with vidIQ. However, I cannot include the live recordings for that in this video as the video would be way too long. So in case you want to see how I do live research for all of the tools in just one video, I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below for you as well. So overall, in my opinion, vidIQ is amazing simply because it has stuff that actually adds to the table when it comes to keyword research. The main things I'm pointing at there is the matching terms within the keyword tool that allows you to easily find longer tail keywords based on just one single word, which allows you to rank easier because usually the longer and more specific a keyword, the less competition and the easier it is for you to rank. Additionally, what I like is that the subscriber count shows up right away when you make a search, as well as the outlier score, helping you to quickly analyze and understand whether this can be a good keyword or not. And then the ice on the caking when it comes to vidIQ is the historical data tool. This allows me to figure out if a video topic is still, as of right now, picking up views or whether it has completely died down, which helps me choose the most relevant keywords all the time. And I know that might seem like a small thing. However, in my opinion, the historical data is one of the go-to tools when it comes to keyword research, because if you make the wrong decision and you choose a keyword that used to perform well in the past, but right now is completely dead and has no traffic anymore, you're pretty much wasting your time and effort. So wherever you are in your current YouTube journey, you cannot really go wrong with vidIQ. Next up, we've got TubeBuddy. TrueBuddy has also been around for a while and it's the biggest vidIQ competitor. And I can tell you as well that when I started off doing YouTube, I was using TrueBuddy myself as well. TrueBuddy's platform looks like this. In my opinion, this is a bit outdated and you will feel that as well when you start using this sidebar right here. However, that doesn't matter that much as we're not gonna do keyword research in here. Instead, you also wanna add the TrueBuddy extension to your browser, which will then allow you to click on it and then open the Keyword Explorer right here. Once you do, this is what the Keyword Explorer looks like. Now, once again, a bit outdated, but it will get the job done. However, will it do that in a good way or not so much? Let's take a look. You can start off just like on vidIQ by clicking right here and then entering a keyword. For example, AI. Once you do that, all of the predictions will then start coming up. You could click on explore and all of this right here will load. It will start off by giving you an overall score for this keyword, a 63 out of 100. What is alarming to me is that it's rated very good, but the keyword I put is AI, which is not a long tail keyword. It is not specific. It is extremely competitive and you cannot rank on just AI as a search phrase. Maybe if you got the biggest channel, you might be able to do it. But for 99.99999 people watching this, that is not going to be the case. But like I said earlier, I don't really recommend using the scores on any tool anyway. It does show us search volume, not with a amount, but rather a red to green bar. Search volume is excellent, meaning a lot of people search for this. The competition is unfair, and this is for my specific channel. So if you've got a paid license on TubeBuddy, it will take a look at the competition based on your channel size, which for me says fair. Then we've got optimization strength, which once again is a bar that says excellent, which shows you how well optimized the top ranking videos are for that search phrase. If the competition did not optimize it properly, it will be in the green, 
However, if all of the videos were to be optimized, it would be in the red. So green is a good sign. However, in my opinion, this doesn't tell me that much. It just tells me the search volume, not even the exact amount, just whether it's green or red, and then competition and optimization strength. So in my opinion, this is all data that doesn't really tell me anything, to be honest. What I do like about this is that you can have the related searches show up right here, just like on vidIQ. However, there are far less that show up. Plus, whereas on vidIQ, we've had the matching term that are clearly related to what we search for. On TubeBuddy, it shows Eric, which is a YouTuber, not really a video keyword, as well as a lot of other keywords that I cannot do much with. For example, Ain't No Sunshine, AirPods Pro. I mean, that's not related to AI. So what it's doing there is once again, not that good. It does get a little better if we search for more specific stuff right away. For example, AI video, it will then give us all of these right here. And this is stuff that we can actually work with. AI video, face changer. Those are actual keywords. You can then directly click on them and then you'll also start going more in depth in the keywords itself. But then once again, it gives me a score that doesn't really tell me that much. And when it comes to keyword research specifically with TubeBuddy, that is pretty much all there is to it. The only thing that they've added as well is that when you search for it on YouTube yourself, you're able to see the related searches and then the keyword score as well right here. However, as you can see, the related searches also show up on YouTube itself if you simply hit space after the keyword. And that is it when it comes to the keyword tool from TubeBuddy. Keep in mind, they've got a lot of other features as well, but that's not really related to keyword research. So overall, TrueBody, in my opinion, is a decent tool. However, that is about it. It doesn't add a lot to the table when it comes to keyword research. All it allows you to do is also find a few long tail keywords based on an initial search phrase, which is what you can do on VideoQ as well. However, TrueBody does not come with all of the additional tools that it helps with keyword research. Then we've got a brand new keyword research tool. This is up and coming and it's called One of 10 made by someone that has been working with Mr. Beast himself. One of 10 is a tool that allows you to do research based on outlier videos, meaning they've built a platform where they collect data from all videos on YouTube, and they've added very specific filters that allows you to find exactly what you're looking for. However, how do you do keyword research? Let me show you. This is the platform itself. This is the keyword research tool. They don't have an extension, but it's also not needed. On one of 10, you've got the homepage. The whole premises of this is that it will show you outlier videos, so videos that perform much better compared to normal on a channel. So this video right here performed 2.6 times better than average on that channel specifically. If you go to home, it will just show you random videos. However, you can also filter per category. For example, you're in the tech niche, you can click tech and then it will only show you outlier videos in the tech niche. For example, this video performed 150 times better than average. You'll be able to open up that video by simply clicking on it. And then as you can see, it will open this up, which will then allow you to analyze it. I actually do so by adding vidIQ to the sauce as well, so that I can take a look at the historical data for this video. Going back to one of 10, you may also click on find similars to dive into a rabbit hole. For example, if you wanna find more similar content that are outliers based on Google DeepMind as a topic, you can click on find similars and it will dive into that rabbit hole. As you can see, we now get more videos around that topic that also performed well, which helps you analyze whether this topic or niche is trending as of right now, which honestly I think is a really cool idea. You'll be able to save those as well by clicking on bookmark and then adding it to one of your folders. If you then go to save right here, that will indeed show up with all of the videos that you added inside that folder. Apart from clicking on an industry, you can also filter this. If you click on filters, it will open up the following filters. And there's quite a lot of them, which is good. Starting off with the multiplier rate. So how much better did those videos perform compared to usual on a channel? If I set this at four, I'm only gonna see videos that performed four times better than normal for a channel, which by default is gonna show me viral video topics. I can also filter on a minimum amount of views, for example, 50,000 uploaded in the last X amount of time, for example, the last three months. This way I can find recent keywords that will perform well, as well as the subscriber count. Ultimately setting this at a lower subscriber count because now I'm gonna find videos that got over 50,000 views in the last three months for a small channel with less than 28,000 subscribers. Click apply changes and those videos will now show up. 
And then when it comes to keyword research specifically, they've got the search bar right here. Just like on the other tools, I will now search for AI. And these are the videos that show up regarding that. Now, as you can see, this is a totally different concept than the previous two tools, because this is not really going to show you keywords itself, but rather videos, including your keyword that performed well. So all of these are AI videos that perform better than usual for a channel, which allows you to find video ideas that are proven to do well. Additionally, I can then go to filters again, put my multiplier, subscriber count range, as well as the publication date. And then as you can see, these are very, very well performing videos in the AI space. An example would then be AI animation generator, which I can click to analyze the video and see what it's about, as well as click on find similars to see if there are more videos like this that perform really well. And as you can see, there are 38 times better, six times better, 21 times better, all about AI animation videos. And because of that, I have now found this video topic right here that has been doing well for other channels. And that's how you can start finding video ideas slash keywords with the one of 10 tool. In case you want to try out one of 10 yourself, I'll leave my personal link in the description down below for you, as well as a full tutorial about this platform. But let's wrap up my conclusion for this tool. Overall, one of 10, in my opinion, is a great great tool for overall research on YouTube. For keyword research specifically, it is not a 10 out of 10 tool. However, I do use it myself. I have a subscription and I use it in combination with vidIQ as well as tool number four that I'll show you in this video. And what I found myself so far is that I find a lot of keywords with one of 10 that I've not really seen before. Next up, we've got a free tool, which isn't really actually a tool. It's called the YouTube search bar. And this is actually what I started with in the beginning of my YouTube career as well. This right here is that YouTube search bar. It allows viewers to find videos, but also us as creators to find keywords, because when you click on this bar, you're able to search for anything you'd like. You can type in whatever. Now, when you do that, YouTube will show you predictions and these predictions are based on their data. So what they'll do is that they'll find out what is most likely to get searched for when someone types in whatever. So if you type in how to, how to wrap a gift is currently searched for the most often. The reason they'll put the most searched for things at the top is to make it more likely for someone to click and then actually watch a video. And that goes with anything that you type in. For example, if you type in AI, all of these predictions will show up right here. So the way you can use this to find keywords is by simply start typing in broad terms in your industry and then see what shows up. If I type in AI, this is the list that shows up. This already gives me quite a few keywords. We can make this more specific by doing a few different methods, one of which is the alphabet method. So you start off by using an initial word or a keyword. For example, AI, you hit space and then from there you type in the A. Once you do so, you'll get a list of predictions based on that. If you do B, you'll get other search predictions. You can do C, you can do D, E, the entire alphabet. And from there, you'll get a ton of keywords. Here's another example, how to A. You'll get this list right here. How to B will show you these keywords. How to C will show you these keywords. And you can also make combinations. So for example, let's say you type in how to, you then add a verb, for example, how to remove, and then you do the alphabet method again, you'll get even more specific keywords. So how to remove A, how to remove B, how to remove C, you get the point. And then as you can see right here, you'll get a list of keywords showing up every single time you do so. For example, how to remove copyright claim on YouTube. You can then search for that and then start doing your research. Then once again, to learn how to do that research, check out my full research tutorial, link down below. But just as a method of generating keywords, this is extremely powerful. Let's say I'm a video editor and I wanna make a video about that topic. I could then type in how to edit and then get a clear idea of what people search for the most. For example, how to edit 4K video in CapCut. That right there is a keyword that I can then research. Now by using the vidIQ extension, I can see that this small channel right here has a video with 800,000 views, even though they only have 4K subs, most of which probably came from this video. And this video performed 3,400 times better than usual. 
The same goes here, how to browser, 12,000 times better, small channel with 166,000 views, which could show us that this keyword right here is a good keyword to make a video about. And this goes on and on. If you type in editing a, you'll find editing apps for YouTube videos as a keyword. And then we can start analyzing the results. And that's how I use the search bar to find keywords. So overall, the YouTube search bar is amazing. You can definitely use this to get your stuff done. And to be honest, it is all you need. However, it does require a higher level of understanding of how YouTube works if you want to find proper keywords. So if you're a beginner, please keep in mind that this will work for you. However, you've got to have some patience to understand exactly how it works. And then finally, on our list, we've got keywords everywhere. A subscriber of mine recently told me about this tool and mentioned that he's using it. He asked me on my opinion. I didn't have one because I don't know the tool. So that's why I started testing it. Keywords Everywhere is not a platform specifically made for YouTube and there's no direct platform that you can do your keyword research on. Meaning, you have to install the browser extension, which you can do right here. And then from there, you can start using it. And that's when you go to YouTube itself. So once you now start searching for stuff with the search bar, like I just showed you as well, with Keywords Everywhere, they'll show you the search volume. For example, Kung Fu Panda 4 has 450,000 searches per month. Now it's cool that you can see that. However, I'm pretty sure that this data is not from YouTube itself, but from Google, which means it's slightly relevant, but not so much. Because yes, if people search for it on Google, probably they do the same on YouTube, but the numbers might be way off. So if I now type in how to, and then for example, uh, A, I'll get all of these keywords right here. How to apply driving license online. It says to have about 5,000 searches per month. I can then search for that and then I'll get to see the results. And that is about the only thing that Keywords Everywhere adds to the table. So you can see the YouTube trend for that specific keyword right here. Now that is cool. I'm not 100% sure how accurate this is. However, it seems to be going up, which is good to see. But as you can see, the videos that get to show up, depending on where it's from, have a lot more views than just 5,000 searches per month, which makes me think that the data is not that accurate. Apart from that, what it adds to the table is this right here. It will show you a ranking difficulty score, the search volume, the top channels, maximum views, and a lot more stuff right here. However, in my opinion, this doesn't do that much. Compared to all of the previous tools that I showed you, arguably, this one adds the least. Overall, this tool is not that great, especially not for YouTube. All it does is show the search volume, which once again, in my opinion, is not that accurate, especially for this tool, because it's not even based on YouTube traffic, it's based on Google traffic. With all of that being said, which keyword research tool should you use? Coming in on number one, we've got vidIQ. Overall, this is one of the best YouTube tools out there, and I do think that they've got the best features when it comes to keyword research specifically. They've got a dedicated keywords tool on their platform that will allow you to see the top search phrases for your channel specifically, but also mainly allows you to search for any keyword. And then by clicking just a few times, you'll have very in-depth long tail keywords, which allow you to quickly find them. So the timing is one of the main benefits, as well as it gives you a quick understanding of what people are searching for. But then what tops it up for me is the historical data feature that allows me to analyze whether a video is still currently getting traffic or not. The outlier score that they've recently added is great as well, as it allows you to go to channels and see their top performing videos and analyze them against their average performance. Once again, I'll leave my exclusive link in case you want to try this for just $1 for 30 days in the description. Coming in at number two, we've got one of 10. Overall, a great research tool for YouTube itself. For keyword research specifically, it is not the best. However, it does help me find a lot of keywords and a lot of video ideas that I normally don't come across. Then coming in at number three, we've got the search bar itself. Overall, this is free, so anyone can get started with this. Great choice, and you can learn a lot from this. At number four or five, I simply don't really care. We've got TrueBody as well as Keywords Everywhere. I do think TrueBody is better than Keywords Everywhere because it's an actual YouTube tool rather than just an extension. However, I won't use them for keyword research as they don't add that much to the table. With all of that being said, I'll leave all resources in the description down below. If you wanna watch my my full keyword research tutorial that's one hour long, totally free. Click on the video right here, then I'll see you there. Have a good day.